Oh, my hair's a mess today. Well, hey there. Uh, today we are talking about, we're doing a video response to Drunken Film School. <laughs> and by the way, guys, if you still haven't subscribed to Drunken Film School, do so. These guys are extremely engaging and funny, and they, uh, they know what they're talking about, well, most of the time. And, you know, they did a great video on Screen Factory. Screen Factory is one of my favorite, favorite release companies. They started back in September of uh, last year, I think. On the 18th of September, they released uh, Halloween 2 and 3. I've been a big fan of Shout Factory. I was getting the Roger Corman uh, classic collection. And uh, so I knew ahead of time when Screen Factory was going to be coming out. <laughs> I was on Blu-ray.com forum where uh, the... Uh, with a guy that met, does the Scream Factory stuff here, where he basically uh, announces all of the Scream Factory releases and talks to some of the fans there. So if you go to Blu-ray.com forum, uh, it's an okay forum, uh, but uh, the guy does come on and he talks about some Scream Factory releases. You can also suggest ones that you think they should release as well. Now uh, the first two, well, I got the first two I got were the first two that came out. I got Halloween two and three. Halloween two and three are are classics, the great films, and. There must has because these are the definitive versions of these films. <laughs> the Halloween 2 had just been put out before, but it had been put out with no features except for a second film. Now, the second film I, I needed, and I still have to get the Halloween 2 for that film, but not for the Halloween 2 transfer itself. It wasn't the greatest for uh, for me. They didn't have any features at all. And the feature it, uh, that it had was called Tearing the Owls, which is a great, great uh, little film on its own. and it should have been released on its own. Uh, now... Screen Factory put out the definitive edition. Screen Factory does something called Horror's Hollowed Grounds. And uh, basically, that's the little feature where they talk about and go on to uh, where the films are made. They're extremely well done and much more interesting than you would than you think they would be. They're uh, very entertaining, very engaging. Uh, a little back history here. Uh, Screen Factory, of course, is an offshoot of the company Shout Factory. Now, Shout Factory... So if you notice, they did a lot of mystery science theater and a lot of stuff like that. Well, that's because Shout Factory, well, the ashes of, from the ashes of Rhino came Shout Factory, uh, kind of like uh, uh, although Blue Underground, although Anchor Bay is around, uh, many people from uh, Blue Underground were originally on Anchor Bay. Uh, now, uh, my favorite releases on uh, Screen Factory so far. That's which is what a uh, which is what the guys asked what. Uh, my favorite releases are well you have to have Halloween 2 and 3 and uh, I think oh they live they mentioned they live so you know I'm not going to get into that one too much because they did a really good job of talking about that film great film has one of the longest fight scenes of all time and uh, I've uh, I'm a really I'm actually a really big fan of it Finance is a really cool Tobe Hooper film my favorite Tobe Hooper film aside from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre of course is uh, was one that was released by Dark Sky Films, and it's called uh, Eaten Alive. That's one of the names for it anyway. And it starred, uh, I think, oh, God, I know Robert England is in, in the very first scene as well. Uh, there are some great. If you're a great slasher, if you're a slasher fan, they got some great stuff here. Now, Scream Factory started out as as being kind of like an '80s label, '80s horror label. But the uh, around mid of the time of this year, they changed that. They went from just doing 80s stuff to doing actually some contemporary stuff. There's a couple of contemporary uh, Screen Factory horror films and 70s as well. And they will be getting some of the, uh, some of the 60s stuff. Now, uh, some of the greats, I'm just going to list a few here that, that I have that I personally enjoy. And that I think that uh, belongs in everyone's collection. Uh, if you're a slasher fan, then you're going to want Terror Train. It's just a really fun movie. It's got uh, Jamie Lee Curtis on it. In this one as well, we've got David Copperfield, uh, the, yes, that magician David Copperfield, one of his first roles, uh, Hart Bachner, uh, the son of uh, Lloyd Bachner, and uh, probably more famous here in Canada than he is in the United States, but he did uh, a lot of pretty cool stuff. And you ever see Urban Legends too? Well, Hart Bachner was one of the leads in that. Uh, Death Valley was a hard, hard to find movie that Scream Factory put out. I was really glad to see them release that. Uh, Deadly Blessing is an underrated Wes Craven film that I really, really like, and it's an early Shannon Stone film, so you're going to get some really cool stuff on this one here as well. Prison is a f film that uh, I personally really enjoy. It's where John Carl Bushler worked with Kane Hodder. They worked there together, and that's where uh, Jason from Part 7 and onwards came from. They, did a, they started doing double features in, the, <clears throat> in early 2013. And their first one was Terror Vision and, and the Video Dead. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice going up there. <clears throat> I personally love this double feature. It's not for everybody, but I... Uh, 
I think it's definitely an enjoyable film. From Beyond, if you're a H.P. Lovecraft fan, it is a must. Uh, Phantasm 2 for me, yes, because I like uh, the Phantasm films. Everybody know, knows, watch my channel, I'm a Phantasm freak, so yeah. If you don't have a lot of the Hammer stuff, the Vampire Lovers is in Blu-ray there. I'm just going through the list right here, basically, to tell you which ones I, I think. The Burning, which was listed by, I think, uh, uh, Nathan, uh, Blu-ray Anonymous, he uh, listed The Burning as a, as a must-have, and i got to agree, The Burning was a must-have. Now, here's where they started doing their 70s stuff. They did a double feature with Charles B. Pierce. Charles B. Pierce is like kind of a, a gonzo documentary-style horror filmmaker. He made uh, things like The Legend of Boggy Creek, and he made The Town of the Dreaded Sundown. And another film that I like actually better than The Town of the Dreaded Sundown, and it's called The Evictors. It stars Jessica Harper from Suspiria. And uh, I kind of, although there's, n there's not a lot of features on this one here, I really did like this, <coughs> this double feature. Uh, he actually did some stuff that wasn't horror. Ninja 3, The Domination, for instance. <coughs> The Howling, for me, that's a must. Life Force, I really enjoyed Life Force. I'm not big on their newer stuff. I didn't even bother to pick up Dead Souls. I didn't bother, bother to pick up Chilling Visions. I did grab The Fog, of course, because I love that film. I think that is one of John Carpenter's most underrated films. Uh, I got a head, head swamp thing. I'm going to grab The Incredible Melting Man because I just love the special effects the way that one's done. That is, again, another uh, 70s film done in 1977. They did an X-ray schizo double feature which are some pretty cheesy bad movies, but if you like this type of stuff, then you're going to buy it. If you buy X-Ride and Skid Side, then you're probably going to be picking up Crawl Space as well, which is another Klaus Kinski film. As far as, like, really cool, great films go, Cue the Wing Server with Larry Cohen. Anything that Larry Cohen does is, is fantastic. I'd skip over the Scanners ones, unless you really, really want them. Prince of Darkness is a must. I still got to get that one. Psycho 2 and Psycho 3 is great, and it has fantastic commentaries. The End of the Horror Trilogy box set, is a must, but you know what the the most must to get is? And this is something I mentioned in the video before. Get the Vincent Price collection. Blu-ray Anonymous has this one. It is an amazing collection. Screen Factory put it out. Basically, some of his works from 1960 to 1971. Some very very great stuff. There's so many so much great stuff coming out by by the Screen Factory right now. Saw them piecing their dream body bags. You know the comet, the horror show, which is also known as House Three, the Beast Within. Next year we got Cat People, we got Die Monster Eyes, that's a Boris Karloff film, Night of the Demons, one of my favorites, Witch Boar is coming out, Dark Man with Liam Neeson, which was mentioned, Bad Dreams and Visiting Hours is coming out again. I already own that on DVD by Chef Factory, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get that back again in that. Um, Summer Party Massacre is coming out, and if you don't have that one, it's a great one, but if you got the set, keep the set, there's nothing new. Sleepaway Camp, a must. Ginger Stamps, Dog Soldiers, you got to have them. Phantom of the Paradise... Uh, you'd be ashamed of yourself as a horror genre collector if you don't get Phantom of the Paradise. Final Exam is for uh, slasher fans alone. It's not going to be for somebody if you don't like slasher fans. Final Exam is not going to be the movie that's going to change your mind. Now it's Friday the Vampire. Yes, the Klaus Kinski one is being reput out by Scream Factory. I cannot wait to see that one. Now be the Cabal Cut. i got to have. And that's my Scream Factory talk for today. Got it in under eight minutes. Talked really fast. Let's see what you like with Scream Factory. Get down there. Watch Drunken Film School, like, subscribe, comment on their channel, then go to Blu-ray Anonymous, then go to Logan Toxic, the all of great channels, check them out. I'm Aaron Pin. I'm in my comfy jammies because my clothes is in the wash. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'm going to go and uh, grab some tea because right now it is seriously time for tea.